Are we recording? You mean just jabber on? What are we talking about today here, big guy? Uh, we are circling back around to the six art video. One of them. <laughs> Do you remember the name of that one? I had it pulled up. Where'd it go? You should, you should probably have that pulled up. A dive into six arc. We are circling around back to a dive into six arc because there's so many questions asked. Now, I would recommend. <laughs> so we've talked about like there's the Sergeant of Arms podcast. There's the three or four, five, six arc podcast we've done. Circle back around those. Like you're probably going to be able to get tons of information on that. And I'm going to say February or March, we're going to have another dive into six arc podcast where I talk about heavies and all that stuff. Like again, there's new powders. Uh, I've, I've done a lot more testing since we've done that one. There's still a lot more I want to get into before we do a whole nother podcast as, as it pertains to projectiles and uh, other rifle platforms and you know things of that nature, and then eventually we'll probably do a bolt gun six arc podcast because that's a whole other beast. What are you doing over there? <laughs> but this is the technically this is the eve of dove season. This is this is pretty exciting times because mm-hmm. what that does it kicks off hunting season. I don't really care about dove. You know, I'm excited for the meat, the bird of peace. It's funny it's a bird of peace, but we blast it to hell. I can't remember the last time I actually, in all the years we've been doing this, got dove meat and got to eat any dove meat. I'm mad at myself because I didn't get more last year. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm going to dove a lot, and then I quit like a week into it. <laughs> I had more than we ever had, but like it's dove meat, so it just lasts no time. Yeah. We had like lots of, uh, uh, I don't know what you call them. When you'd find when. When Brooke had finally cooked it up, I think I wasn't here for some reason in the first match. I don't. We something we, happened with that. I eat it all up with quickness. With a, quick, uh, with a quickness. We made some dove poppers, I believe, is what they're referred to, and some dove skewers. I don't know what they call this stuff. Skewers. You made some dove skewers. Uh, I'm hoping this year I uh, pack away a lot more. Uh, and just you know, because it's it's dove hunting. It's like you know. Yeah, I got, I, gets old after a while. Seven days from, oh wait, a week from now, a week from now exactly, we're gonna be stressed the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm shooting dove. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Probably be shooting more than Aaron. Ad- Ar- What's his last name? I kind of never. I want to call him Evans, but that's not it. Uh, Aaron Anderson. Aaron Anderson. Aaron Anderson. There's no doubt that I'll be shooting way more dove than Aaron Anderson. There's just no doubt with my new fangled. Fancy shotgun, which I can't wait for people to see this god awful look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this if you haven't been on Ally Munitions.com, we have dove hunting ammo 12 and 20 right now. If, if I can get some the 410s and 32s, I will. But I have a feeling we'll be completely out of that in the store. But we will ship it to your door. So, like, if you need dove hunting ammo, you don't feel like going anywhere. Just well, yeah, and if you if you are local to us and you're listening, because yes. really, what the day before we have, yes. we just got another eight pallets. To come stock. to the store. We have more shotguns, more dub ammo, and uh, more decoys than we've ever had. Uh, we went heavy, so again, we want to make sure we had everything as much as we can get our hands on that you guys need for dub season. No one else in town is going to have the amount we have. So you better stop by. Don't forget to get a dub license. I mean, a uh, hunting license. 201 Spring Park Drive. Yeah. Yeah, uh, stop by, get a hunting license, get a... Uh, don't uh, forget flat. the hunting license. <laughs> I made that mistake one time. Actually, funny story. Uh, we might have already told this, I don't remember. <clears throat> so, like, religiously, I dub hunted every year. You know, that's just what we did. And then there was, like, this huge span of time there where I didn't because I was better hunting already. Uh, we're talking like, I don't know, like six, seven years where I didn't dove hunt whatsoever. And then uh, this was right before I moved down here. I was like, oh, I'm going to go dove hunting this year. Yeah, I'm ready to go dove hunting again. So I go to the store. Uh, I don't remember where I went. Uh, got some shotgun shells like almost everybody does. Shotgun shells and hunting license. And I specifically said, I'm going dove hunting so I need my hunting license. 
and here's my shotgun shells. The person behind the counter, now I know it's my job to read all the rules and regulations. Somewhere in there, you had to have dove stamp or something. I don't remember what it was. They had started doing uh, like migratory bird or something, something new that I was not, I don't read the rule book. <laughs> I do now, <laughs> but anyways, they just sell me a hunting license and I go dove hunting. And uh, like, this is like uh, the next day after opening day, game warden pulls up. Like it was pretty common occurrence out there, which I'm sure it is everywhere. Uh, Cause there's tons of us around this farm, man. And you know, you know, uh, you know, how most people get when game warden, even if they're not doing anything wrong, they're just like mm, game warden. Blah, blah. And I, it, I've always been this way. Even if I was doing something wrong when I was a kid, like the cops, I was just be like, yeah, I did that. Like you're busted. <laughs> There's no sense in lying about it. But I've always, I've never been like, I've had one or two bad situations with cops where it's kind of bullshit. But other than that, I've, I've never been the one. Even if I was doing something wrong, to like cops, blah. they're just doing your, their job. Uh, literally same thing can go for game wards. Like they're just doing their job. Like that's literally what they get paid to do. The best thing you can do is just be, you know, who else got paid to do things. Who? The Nazi guards who <laughs> carted <laughs> train fools of poor Jewish people <laughs> to the camps. Would that mean, make it right? In that particular circumstance, probably not. <laughs> We're talking about nothing. <laughs> but anyways, so it's a slippery slope way. <laughs> Anyways, I am a sovereign citizen of these here United States <laughs> here merely catching dinner. Game word pulls up and again, like you see it, like people are like, oh, I'm yeah. just like, if you're not doing anything wrong, what do you care? Pause. The reason why everybody else is freaking out is because everybody has a buzz <laughs> and you don't drink. That's the reality. Of no, the this is back in my drinking days and oh. I, I happen to not be drinking. I think it was. Might have been right after I saw. I, I don't, don't need. I don't need any help in missing the damn birds. Personally, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was aiming fluid. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, I think Daniel coined that phrase. Really? That's, that's I've never heard that. God. That's pretty amazing. G- give me some of that there aiming fluid. <laughs> it sounds like something my uncle would tell me. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> you know, I my dumb ass <laughs> just. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Do, do, do. Whip out my license. I'm like, I got, you know, I hadn't even, we hadn't even been hunting long, so I didn't have a limit. And, you know, I know that's surprising, Aaron. <laughs> I hope you listen. To this. I was like, here's my license. She's like, where's your, whatever it was, dove stamp or something. I don't, you know, I need, I probably need to know this, <laughs> but whatever it was that you all of a sudden needed for dove hunting, I didn't have. And she's like, here's your ticket. <laughs> I'm like son of a bitch, and I. How much is that I, ticket? It's like 110 or something. I don't remember. It wasn't much, I, and it might have might have been. This has been years ago. It might have been able to defer it somehow because I went and got the whatever I needed. This, again, I feel like it's a dove stamp or something. I don't a migratory bird stamp or something. I don't remember something they didn't do before that they started doing somewhere in my lull of dove hunting. Uh, but it was just funny. Dan was like, "Yeah, dumbass, you just walk up there all." <laughs> all cocky and arrogant whipping at your license <laughs> but anyways it, you know even the game warden got a little chuckle out <laughs> here's your ticket you idiot <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically Stupid. and i'm like what was i gonna do run <laughs> you know i was like oh okay and then that's where i learned a very valuable lesson uh i go i go well i told the guy at the counter that i was going dove hunting she's like mm, it's not his problem yeah, the valuable right. lesson should have been don't talk to cops. That's kind of the big one. <laughs> I'm going to talk to them because I ain't got nothing to hide. You don't have one of them Texas Game Warden Association uh, hunting sleeves? <laughs> no. Did I never give you one? No. Because we used to sponsor the, the kids hunt at Allen. Oh. And so they would... It's like, I, it, I don't know, it feels crooked to me because they send you these sleeves that are like... Oh, they have the Texas Game Warden Association logo. Oh, it's like a back in the day. It was a um, oh shit. There's some sticker you could donate some police. Oh yeah, thing. put the sticker on your car. It's Isn't like, it? does that work? No, no, it doesn't. Because I have one. Whatever it was, I'll, this is years ago when I had a lead foot. Yeah, <laughs> that shit didn't Wait, you work. Mean, you, mean, you mean yesterday morning? <laughs> no. 
Oh my gosh. But anyways, uh, make sure you have your hunting license and make sure you have all appropriate stamps and tags and everything else. And if you don't, make sure you don't get caught. Yeah, maybe don't go trudging towards the game warden. <laughs> hey there. But anyways, uh, did we mention today's topic? <laughs> I don't even know. I think we went uh, into that. Yeah, we did. So, Oh, yeah, we did. We're revisiting the six arc video. And we're answer some questions because, like, I noticed that it still gets questions. Like, you know, uh, we're gonna go ahead and knock out some some new questions about the six arc. Uh, and with that, I'll turn over to Pitsy. Some of these I actually haven't read before, and again, I wish you could pop them up in a better way. Because um, this one just says "bang." <laughs> I like that one. And then this guy says, "Need better lighting." If you think you're too ugly, just wear a mask. <laughs> I like that one too. It's pretty funny. Uh, speaking of six arc, I want to talk about the rifle on the table right now, because uh, you might be able to get one eventually. Now, I'm not. I was I was thinking about doing it this season, but I want to put a lot more rounds because uh, we made a slight change and I want to do some testing. But you might you might have seen like a teaser photo of this here and there, but this is a six arc. Imagine that. Uh, that this will be available. In limited quantities. And this is going to be built by Sergeant Arms. Per my specs. Uh, what it's going to come with is a 16 inch proof carbon fiber wrapped barrel. As you see it here, it'll probably come just like that. Uh, unless I change my mind on the optic. Uh, this is a Mark 5 2 to 10 with an offset Delta Point Pro red dot. In a Badger Ordnance mount. With the J arm and everything else, flatline ops isn't that flatline ops? Uh, level yes. I don't remember what brand level this is. And their no, little it's flatline. What do they call this? Bone spur or Bone something spur, like that. Yeah. Uh, the, the flatline ops fixings. Geisley trigger, obviously. Uh, Magpul furniture, obviously. Uh, you know, again, this is Sergeant Arms build, but their their handguard that integrated arc rail, and it'll. We'll probably offer it. And this is what I got to figure out. And that's why I decided, like, uh, two reasons I decided to push this project. One, I made a last-minute mind change on the barrel to go to a carbon fiber. And I, I'm really glad I did because it, it, that little bit of, it's like a one-pound weight difference. And I know, like, that's, you know, a lot of people are like, why? Well, you know, but it, to me, the it made the balance completely perfect. Uh and I, I really like a good, well-balanced rifle. Uh, and shaving that one pound off made a... You take a pound out of a rifle, it makes a world of difference in carrying it. And that, what it, the purpose of this platform is, I do it all rifle, meaning long-range plinking, predator hunting, deer hunting, whatever you want to do with it, this thing will do it all. And that's, that's why I spec'd out the trigger I wanted, the barrel length, and all that stuff. And it'll come with our ammo, a case... And uh, we'll probably do something a little extra on the case. And if you'll notice, it has a suppressor. Now, you know, we'll probably offer this particular suppressor as a upgrade. And I might just do like X amount that come with the suppressor, X amount that don't. I, you know, I still got to make up my mind. But as you can tell here, there's a TPH school in the lower. Fancy. Uh, I can tell you this. These will come with accuracy guarantees because we won't sell it if it doesn't perform to a certain ability. It'll come with ammo. It'll come with bipod, magpul bipod because it's the best bipod. <laughs> uh, accuracy guarantee, optics, everything. It'll be ready to go uh, just like I'm shooting this one right here. But again, you know what I'm going to do? I was thinking about just doing like a limited number. But uh, if you're interested in one, obviously this ain't gonna be a cheap AR. This is a fully custom tuned AR, and like especially when you add in the optics and the suppressor, like that's gonna be a upper end, higher tier cost. Like it's not gonna be cheap. I, I can't give you like a thereabouts price yet. Like it's it's not gonna be cheap. That's all I can tell you. Uh, I can tell you it'll come with a pretty stringent accuracy guarantee, or else we won't push it out there. Uh, let us know down below if you might be interested in one. Uh, and like I said, I'm not going to do it this season. I was thinking about it, but since we put the new barrel on, even though I have extensive testing results out of proof barrels, 
I still want to put this thing through the paces for we. Uh, you know what? 16 inch is going to be where it's at. This gas system is going to be where it's at. Like the suppressors, this is the Wolf Hunter from Diligent Defense. Uh, th- it probably will be. Oh, there ain't no probably. It will be a custom TPH Wolf Hunter. You know, obviously it's going to be 10. <laughs> but uh, there'll be like little extra things here and there. It's it, And we're probably only going to do a limited run of these. But. Uh, if you if you might be interested in one again, I know you know it's hard to say yes or no given we're not giving you the cost. I can't tell you it's not going to be cheap. Uh, but if you're interested in potentially owning one, let us know down below because like I was thinking like six at first, then I was thinking half dozen. But you know, if we could do like twenty twenty five, might do that. You know, and then go ahead and let us know down below. What uh, what are some other custom package package builds you'd like to see, like limited runs? Because that's we I get asked a lot uh, if I build rifles and everything else, or if you know all that kind of stuff, or if we we team up with other people and we have a lot of stuff planned, and there will be some boat guns dropping here very very soon, like very soon, that are custom combo packages. More on that later. Like once. Once I'm fully ready for that, which will be very soon, we'll have like a probably 12 minute talk covering the entire package and all that stuff. But let us know about down below, like what you think. Would you like to see other caliber packages? Because what I'm actually thinking after this one is a fox, like a straight fox hunting AR uh, with it's going to be a little bit cheaper than this one, you know, uh, but like a particular barrel length ammo. All like the whole kit and caboodle, certain LPVO, yes, LPVO, like just a a dedicated fox rig in an AR-15 platform. But let's know below, down below what you think, what you'd like to see, any questions you might have. I'm not going to share too much more on this. I mean, I've pretty much spilled the beans. But uh, like I said, be it'll be after this season. You know, I I, I still want to put a ton of rounds down this and make sure like i don't want to make any last minute changes because I, I i've spent a lot of time thinking about this testing optics optic combos and everything else like i went back and forth for a while on an lpvo instead of like a, a you know an mpvo in an offset red dot and what its main purpose is like predator hunting deer hunting and everything else and i i really like this combo but it isn't cheap but i mean if you want a really high Degree of accuracy in AR, you know, AR-15 platform and good solid equipment. Like if I'm going to stamp my name on something, it's going to be good shit. You know, and yeah, we could probably get into something a little bit lower cost, but I just this particular this particular build, just like the boat guns, we're probably getting ready. We're getting ready to come out with. They're not going to be cheap. They're not going to be like the most expensive thing you ever heard of, but they are going to be combo packages ready to hunt out of the box, and they are going to come with a certain actually guarantee. And you will get a target with each rifle showing what it was capable of with said ammo. But anyways, are you ready for some questions? Um, yes. All right. Anyway, going back to our previous A Dive in Six Arc video, we're going to read off some of the comments and Wade's going to answer them live on air. Wait, we're live? <laughs> well, I mean, we're alive. hi yo. Oh, so starting out, the first question is uh, Buck Fo Jiden. Uh, Excuse me? You... Fuck Bo J- Wait, no. Buck Fo Jiden. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't, I don't get it. Oh, uh, he's asking. Are you being for real? Is that really the name? Yeah. <laughs> Buck Fo Jiden. <laughs> Pretty great name. Uh, he's asking uh, basically how you feel about 95 grain TMKs on 6 Art. I actually ran 95 TMKs on a bunch of pigs very early on, and it worked fantastically. I actually am a pretty good fan of the 95 TMK for like that sub 800 yard range, like 800 yards in the end. Uh, I've had really good luck in the past, but I've also haven't gotten any new ones in a while. Uh, I had a because I religiously ran that in six Creed for a long time, uh, especially on white tailed pigs. Because, you know, it comes in, like, especially pushing at six creed velocities, it came in a little bit higher than, a, like, a .5 G1 BC, which I don't remember what that is, G7. Uh, so, uh, like, that was one of the first heavier grain projectiles I loaded in six art for myself doing testing. Uh, got an A-plus for me. Uh, 
I like that bullet very much. But again, I have some newer manufactured ones, but I haven't had any time to test them. Like that was all oh, very old lot stuff that I bought a ton years ago. But I hope that, you know, I'm a fan of that bullet. I'll just say that. In the 6R, 6 Creed, like it's good, good bullet. Matthew UA1, subscriber, by the way. I always love. Thank you, Matthew. People are like, I love your podcast. And it's like, hit the subscribe button. <laughs> I, I, never, I never realized when you go through the comments on our end, you actually see who is and who isn't. I didn't know that. Um, it's a little red dot next to his name. Uh, his comment is just Bing. Bing? Bing. Bing? Bing. Is it because we used to say that? Like, Bing. <laughs> oh, probably. <laughs> He's a super fan, man. Now, I'm just, I mean, I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'm going to put this comment up on the screen. It's that one guy who is very detailed and oriented. But he was talking about type 1, type 2 bolts and, you know, the history of 6.5 Grendel. I believe he used to be a mod or he helped run the 6.5 Grendel oh, website okay. for him. So I'm going to put that comment up here if you care about that. Bing. And you need accurate information. Yeah, bing. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's good on that. Um this guy asks, how does everyone feel about 12.5 Arc? Uh, still haven't done that. How do you feel about it, Wade? <laughs> Fail. Don't know yet. I Knowing what I know off, like, so far, the only thing I've tested is 14.5 and up. Like, 14.5 all the way up to 24 inch. Uh, seeing what I've seen, knowing what I know about 14.5, my answer used to be I wouldn't build one. Because, like, gas block situation and everything else, and it just... Even playing with faster burning powders, it's still hard to get something that just is not god awful dirty in the shorter, you know, gas system platforms. But where I might change my mind is the what's the seven six two TI? What's uh, oh, the Huxworks flow. the flow seven six two TI? That changed a lot of stuff. I'm just, I've admitted it once, but I'll admit it again. Like we actually had a someone asked the other day, "How's it going with that?" Uh, I have, I think, six hundred rounds down that suppressor right now. Uh, still love it. Uh, that literally changed my thinking on a lot of stuff, as as things tend to do as new technology comes out. Uh, I don't give a shit what these people said in the comments. There was one guy who was like, "It's no different than the old one." Uh, you know, number one, I don't have the old one, so I don't. I, don't, I can't. I don't care to comment. I have had older flow through style suppressors, which turned me off to them because they were loud. You know, it, it wasn't worth it. But this one changed my mind on that. Like it's, it sounds good, and it really reduces back pressure. So I'm about that life, and it might change my mind on a twelve five. But I don't think I'd build one in an AR platform. I think it'd only be a boat gun so I can get that extra bit of velocity because, and we might've got into that in that podcast, the six arc really comes alive in a bolt action platform. Everybody knows that it's no secret. Uh, yes, it takes some utility away you know, as far as like having multiple rounds at your disposal for like a pig hunting scenario. But that thing really, really comes alive in a bolt action platform, especially if you're not afraid to, you know, run a little bit higher than what you're probably supposed to. But what I'm really excited about, and I hope it happens sooner rather than later, is uh, if Alpha comes out with a OCD version of 6 Arc. That'll be a complete, I don't, I've said this just a few times the past year because a lot of things have changed a lot. In the Alpha OCD brass, 6 Arc will be a complete game changer in the bolt action platform. As far as what it's capable of, what velocities it's capable of in such short uh, platforms. Because, like I said, this to me, this cartridge really shines in that 16, 18 inch barrel. Like, obviously, the longer the barrel, the faster velocity. Obviously, it still performs really well in the shorter reaction, the shorter barrel platforms. Like, I really, I love my 14.5, and it's still <clears throat> very much capable of like the mid 2500 feet per second uh, velocity range in a 14 and a half inch barrel uh very capable of it and that's semi-auto platform now you can add 100 to 200 feet per second when you move over to bolt action and i'm i'm saying 100 to 200 because it's going to be up to you what you want to do with it uh but i i have <laughs> my me personally have separate loads for my 16 inch bolt gun that i'm going to be using Quite a bit this year, uh, my 16-inch 6-arc proof uh, bolt gun. 
I have 105s that do 27 and some change in the 16 inch, which is probably a little bit, a little bit hot, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine for me. I'm willing to take the risk. I don't care. But it, like you, you pair that up with some alpha OCD grass and put that in like a 12.5 or 14.5 bolt gun. I know it's going to be an SBR and all that crap, but I don't care. Like you're talking about a super compact, badass little hunting bolt bolt rifle. Like that's it's capable of fantastic velocities. Uh, what what else would you want at that point for most game that we're going to be hunting out here? Anything from like I'm going to say all that and down, but like it depends on the range. Like if I'm shooting within a couple hundred yards and that's it, like I'd shoot mule deer, white tail, whatever. Like it's that's more than capable. But as far as a uh, semi auto, <laughs> I haven't got one because I I really and I might uh. Because there are a lot of people going to a 12.5, 14.5, I might do that for very soon for a uh, short barrel offering that we're going to do through munitions. Right now, I'm working on that because I run some polls the other day uh, to just kind of circle. I circle back around constantly on these polls to see if anything's changed, in which uh, on the other side of the house, I ran some in TPH about lights and thermals. Right now, lights and thermals are running neck and neck, like as far as most use night hunting tools but in the six art group alone uh 18 inch took the pole by long shot as far as like the most common barrel length so our first first thing we're going to be worried about is like uh catering to that 16 to 22 inch uh ar-15 platform for the varmint ammo which because when you start you know again doing these uh, barrel length specific loads we're doing different powders and everything else. And what runs really good in a 12.5 or 14.5, probably not going to perform as well in an 18 inch or like those rifle plus two gas links and everything else. So we'll probably have the more I see people going into that 12.5, 14.5, especially like uh, I see a lot of people using it for hunting, primarily like a little thermal rig, 12.5 and 14.5. But the more people I see run that, the more I'll, I've already got good loads on that because I've been running 14.5 so long. Uh, that'll be an easy one to go to but first thing we're gonna release is the longer barrel stuff but there's a really long way to answer no <laughs> no we haven't yet now geez <laughs> i've talked to a bunch of people running 12 fives uh they like it is it worth it i guess what are you doing with it you know would it be cool sure is it gonna be gassy if you run it like a traditional spreader? absolutely <laughs> uh if you got a flow through suppressor it's it's going to help you a lot if you're shooting factory horny it's going to be really really gassy and shitty and just awful because they use shitty and awful powders uh, you know that's just my opinion but uh yeah that's just a long way of saying uh fitzy has it built his and uh i haven't bunny barrels yet i haven't well no i guess i, I mean other than literally mag dumping full auto rounds at a berm to test something else I haven't tried anything. <laughs> what a loser! In a really long time. <laughs> oh, and that was the worst because it was that freaking full auto ten five with a bunch of gas in my <sighs> face, and it was it was uh, that Winchester Valor. Yes, that's so really super awful. gassy. And like, I mean, I had like not even a, a a chin weld on that gun just to like, you know, basically because it was just like so much gas in an indoor range. So no, no, thank you. Yeah. Awful. Um moving on. Yeah, moving moving on. Uh said I believe Dan Dex Inventor. Um That's his name? Yeah. Dan Dex Inventor. That was his username. Oh. You know, you, you know username. What are. is the inventor? What is he inventing? He's probably inventing Let us know, Dan. Really cool stuff. That's <laughs> like <laughs> What is what is old Dan? Wait, up did to? he is this him? That's who? Is this Dan climbing a climbing a, a light bulb tower? This is <laughs> eleven years ago. Oh no, these videos freak me out, man. Oh, the light bulb tower. People? Oh, then and he was doing. If he posted this video eleven years ago, he was uh, he was very like before the trend of posting videos of doing that. Right. Yikes! I'm commenting on that one. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> what is old what is old Dan up to? What 
What's so he, he, got for uh, he said uh, he started to do his homework on Six Arc in 2020 and didn't purchase anything until 22, feeling like that paid off on everything but a scope. He was wondering if you had any suggestions for someone like him wanting to shoot out to a thousand meters or so, but in planning to hunt as well. Did he say meters? Yes. Dan. <laughs> Maybe he was military. Probably. Uh, Dan. I have, I have a three. He says a 3.5 to 10 X on it now, but it needs, uh, it seems to be, yeah, we, we are a monarchist here. We only believe in measuring things off, you know, the King, <laughs> the King system. Um, but anyway, three and a half to 10, <gasps> it's, Really good, like five to six hundred. Then it's not cutting anything past that. He'd rather save up and get a good, high quality glass, but not sure where to start. As in, which brand's the best bang for the bug? It depends. What is your budget? Uh, if you if you're going to tell me like I don't have a budget and I just want something that's good for that range, Mark Five three point six eighteen. Uh, you know, I, I I like the the more compact stuff, like the the. The Kales, what is it, 3.6 to whatever? I don't remember. There's a 3 to 18, I thought, right? It's, I thought it was 3-something, but the the Kales calls, I don't yeah. know how you say that. Uh, the the best, Night Force. Kales is definitely not best bang for the buck. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm obviously starting near the yeah. top here. The the Night Force uh, 2.5 to 20, is that what that one is? Yeah, It's, yeah, it's yeah. a little bit, for a Night Force, a little bit more compact. I mean, there's also the Attacker 4 to 16. It's not... It's not overly big on this. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> for me, like I, I, I like certain looks on ARs. I don't like big scopes on ARs unless it's a really honking ass barrel AR. Like most of the ARs, 16, 18 inch, whatever. I like that, you know, more comp. Like this is about as long as I like for stuff to get. Uh, uh, there's the EOTech Voodoo 525. It's compact. Uh, pretty, looks yeah. really good on a AR. Um, it really it just depends on your your budget. Uh, I mean, you I would, can do a thousand, an an eighteen power at a thousand. Yes, I mean it's you can do you can do a thousand with a ten X. I've done it with this one. Uh, is it the most ideal? No, but like a lot of people overpower this shit, and then they find out very quickly that unless you're shooting very specific times that you don't even yeah. use all that power. Like Boy, the mirage is the mirage is yeah. awful. Uh, and you know, it's going to be worse out here versus like other places, but it's still a thing that you have to, you know, contend with. And what you end up doing is like dialing back to again, when I'm shooting out to a thousand, I'm generally probably 16 to 18 X, sometimes 20. It just depends. Like if, if there's, is there no mirage? Then yeah, I'll, you know, if I got one of my five to 25s or, you know, 636 whatever i will dial on down when i'm able but majority of the time in hunting scenarios like i've i've never once gotten to shoot anything when there wasn't a bad mirage like i don't know why that is it just seems like it pans out that way especially out here during the winter where i primarily hunt uh that's why like 18x is about as far as i go for most hunting platforms and then like from there again it all depends on budget from there like if you don't want to spend that kind of that kind of dough uh, to get into the, like the Night Force and the um, Mark Five and stuff like that, there is uh, the Sig Easy Six BDX, which is a three to eighteen. The cool thing about that system is it's more compact. Uh, it does work with BDX system, but what you can do is the BDX system uh, caps out eight hundred yards. And that's going to be more than adequate for most people's hunting. Like more than most people ain't going to shoot that far hunting. And it's going to really fall in line with most common engagement ranges for hunting, like five, 600 yards and in. But the cool thing about that particular, the easy six BDX is you can spin off that camp and you have a, a good downable turret. And also the reticle that's a new reticle they came out with is perfect for uh, being able to either do the holdover system of the BDX or dial in, you know, shoot that way. So, Easy Six BDX, and they're coming out with a new scope. I don't know if I technically can say that. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it with. <laughs> there's gonna be a new scope <laughs> that's gonna be really rad. Uh, but I think street. I, I forget what street price on the Mark Five is. That's probably like the yeah, low, I mean, the low of the high end for something yeah, that's gonna yeah, have illuminated. Yeah, yeah, the illuminated is gonna be the most expensive one. Uh, if you get non-illuminated, like if you're never going to take a shot where you might need illumination, uh, which that's what you got to watch out on first focal plane modern scopes, is if they're not illuminated on like their lowest power setting, some of them you can't even see the reticle. So that's where the illumination comes in. Like 
It just it very much depends on what you're going to be doing. If you're only going to be shooting long ranges, you're only going to be shooting long ranges during the day. Like you can save a ton of, you can get a Mark Five at a good deal when it's not illuminated. It just depends on what your needs, what your budget, and everything else. Um, one I've been playing with a lot here lately. It's on the Seven PRC right now. That I'm very impressed with for the price point is the new three to eighteen. Um, golly, what's it called? Uh, Vortex Strike Eagle. I think it's Strike Eagle 3 to 18. They just came out with it not that long ago. Uh, for the monies, I'm very impressed with that scope. Uh, it's sub thousand dollar, like I don't remember the exact price right now, uh, but it's sub thousand uh, dollars. Been tracking fine. I like the, I love the reticle on that one. It's like the EBR 7C or whatever the mill version is. <clears throat> uh, the Dog Soldier scope, uh, the, the, what is his legend name? legend precision optics that's actually it's a 4 to 24 that's really meant more for hunting than long range shooting but it's kind of like this good crossover it's very compact now it is a little bit on the heavy side but you know when we start talking about night force and shit like that like a lot of them are heavy but it's it's a compact form factor which i tend to recommend and i like to see on ar15 platforms uh past that like you know, if you're going to be shooting out there at long ranges consistently, I don't recommend getting too awful cheap. Like, if you're going to be using those turrets a lot, I don't recommend going very cheap. Because there's, you know, uh, Arkin gets a lot of praise for being a very budget tier scope that dials, uh, tracks very good and all that stuff, which I have, I've never tested one. Uh, there nowadays you can get a lot of stuff a lot of good bang for your buck but if you're going to be shooting out long range dialing repeatedly and like you want good quality optics and i just recommend like don't get too far away from the thousand dollar price point but certainly if you can spend more you're just going to get that much better optic clarity and all that stuff but i feel like i can answer that one pretty good it just depends <laughs> right there's a few recommendations in there for you but it just depends budget being a big one uh next question give me one second i'm, I'm writing a, the thing that way i can post it on all the ones we respond to like the commenters know that they can go to the video to watch oh the okay response. um how polite of you just trying you know i'm doing really my, really looking out for you guys i'm doing i'm doing my part okay <laughs> we do you know what uh we're pretty fucking great no <laughs> Uh, we're pretty great, and three hundred eight isn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I love the the comments. Regardless, you know, it's either someone just like I love y'all, y'all are fucking hilarious, or it's someone like y'all are stupid. I hate y'all. <laughs> and then there's like everything in between. I like to hear all of it. I I want to see like what you think and what you think we should be covering. If the, the, here's the thing, like the, some of the comments, there's even if even if they are bashing me, there there's always going to be some sort of validness to it because maybe I didn't take the time to explain myself properly and they just didn't understand. But there's one particular type of comments that I just like. You know what? Just don't waste my time. And it's the people who didn't actually. You could tell they didn't actually listen. Yeah, they just like they seen like the first minute or whatever, and they're just like bah, 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 you know exp expunging just garbage on you. Those I could really do without, but everything else, like even if it's someone critiquing us, even if it's someone like, you know what, I love y'all's podcast, or, you know, is Fitzy gay because he listens to Taylor Swift? Obviously it is. Uh, I like all the comments, you know. Um, yeah, so well, I, even the ones that hate on me, I love it. I, well, <laughs> it's kind of a uh, big guy. I think it helps us. It gives us something, whether it's hate or love or anything. It gives us a direction yeah, versus it, like you know, nobody commenting. That's questions uh, are always... A lot of times I'll try to get to as many questions as I can. If you if you commented for you'll see like there's a TPH podcast responding, and then there's uh, Texas Predator Hunting responding. That's me. I'm Texas Predator Hunting, and uh, Sir Fitzgerald is the TPH podcast. Uh, any questions? Any topics? Any ideas? We we always love like the feedback because it's going to tell us like what we're doing good, what we're doing bad, and how we should explain things better. And you know what? If you just come in there and want to talk some shit, we'll talk some shit with you. It don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is one guy who uh, tends to uh, make me laugh my ass off. He's been commenting here lately. Is the guy with the mustache? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he commented one the other day. Uh, what was it here? Um, I love his comments because it was like, it was on the, I think the one with the test. He's like, I don't 
have a response to processing <laughs> this. All I can think of is gay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's but, fine too. We again it's all in good fun. Yeah. We're I all, mean if you actually hate me, like I, I'm still fine with that, but uh, <laughs> like I read them all as uh, as love first. Peace and love. Peace and love. Affirmation. <laughs> Uh, he commented recently, I think. Oh, yeah. Science has clearly proven hunting with a sharp or fast-moving objects has directly or indirectly decreased to the size of your dog. If you're a man, you're going to use your teeth or fingernails to kill, but you better be G-damn sure those talons are filled. Hey, Robin, what say you? <laughs> and I was like, I guess I'm the rap Robin to Wade's Batman, which is cool uh, because he eventually becomes Night, you know, Nightwing. I mean, you know. And then uh, so my response to that was, uh, oh my God. I guess since it's already small, I'll stick to the fastest moving object I'm legally allowed to. Signed, Robin. <laughs> I didn't even see all this. Oh, yeah. It was last night, I think. Oh. Anyways. But anyway, yeah. Dude, like, yeah, comments are great. Yeah. Um, uh, Inkwell Photo asks. Um, what was that name? Inkwell Photo, like F-O-T-O. Interesting. Also a subscriber, so thank you for that. Any information on a bolt action six millimeter arc? I'm looking for the best length barrel and twist rate for the factory loads 103, 105, 108 until he starts to reload. Is a one and seven five twist still good in a twenty two inch? Yeah, yeah. If you're gonna be primarily with Hornady's offerings, 103, 105, 108, one and seven, one seven half is where I'd like to live. Now, the interesting tidbit of information is uh, we got some in finally the Howa six arcs. According to their website, they're one and eight twists. And I'm interested, like, more than likely it's going to be fine. But I would want it from everything I've seen, because I have anywhere from one and seven all the way up to, uh, oh, gosh, what's that one? I think I have a one and nine, maybe. But I have some one and eight bolt guns. I have some one and seven halves, one and sevens. Uh, I, I really like the one and seven, one and seven and a half. Like I just, I've been totally fine, pleased with those. Uh, yes, if you're gonna run hand loads in a boat gun, you're gonna get into the super lightweight stuff, especially longer barreled. There is the potential of overspinning that projectile, but majority of the time not, because like this, this cartridge falls right there in that sweet spot to where it's gonna be in most situations. It's gonna be hard to overspin it. Now you can do it in boat gun, but with factory stuff, no. Now, one and seven halves will be fine. One and seven is going to be fine. Uh, there might even be some one and seven point seven out there. I don't remember, but it's going to be more than adequate for what you're trying to do. Uh, just watch out for the one and eights. I mean, I'm sure. Again, you can go look at the uh, barrel twist calculator. I think on Berger's website, and it also has to do with what elevation you're at and all that stuff. Do your own research before you get into a certain barrel and expect certain results. Uh, more than likely, it'll be fine for most scenarios. But I, I, me personally, a one in seven, one in seven and a half is going to be perfect for just about any barrel length, for especially factory ammo. Now, if you were getting, if you were getting a bolt action, what barrel length would you be going with? <laughs> Am I hand loading or factory? Factory. Uh, factory. I'd probably want at least an eighteen inch because like it's going to be really developed around that in mind. Uh. If I'm hand loading, I'm gonna go short. Like I really like the performance that I'm getting out of 16 inch hand loading. Yeah, uh, factory, which I mean, some of Hornady's factory stuff is gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna lend itself better results out of longer barrels uh, based off the type of powder they use. Uh, but like 18 inch and longer, like which that's a lot, most of the most of the barrel manufacture uh, barrel. Most of the bone gun manufacturers are sticking with that 18 inch and longer, which I mean, you have Christian and Proof that got some 16s, but most of them are going to be that 18 inch and longer. Like Savage got some 18s and 20s, I think, and maybe even 22s. I don't remember. They got a lot of stuff going on. You know, like, great for you, Savage. Way to jump on the six arc bandwagon. <laughs> no. <laughs> or did I, did I answer that properly? Yeah, I think you did again. Rock and, uh, rock and roll on a bow gun, especially if you're going to get into hand loading. All right, we're going to address this. Uh, this might be a controversial take. Ooh. Johnny Reloading Bench is real world stuff, not fantasy worship of some caliber that you think is years of planning by Hornady and performs miracles. 
Hornady didn't even design the six millimeter arc. They copied it from other wildcatters. Six millimeter AR is the same thing, just barely modified for no legitimate reason. Other than to say that they designed something when they didn't. Same thing with the 6.5 Creedmoor. 250 Savage, 22 250, 300 Savage are all basically what the 6.5 Creedmoor is made from. It wasn't, it wasn't designed from the ground up. That's mythological BS. 223, 556, and an AR is basically equal to 6 millimeter arc, except for 80 grain and heavier. If you want to hunt deer with a 223, you can buy some barns, all copper, and be extremely effective. I have personally shot many deer with just standard cup and core bullets, mostly 60 grain soft point. The all copper are way better, they just cost a lot. When you look at 6 millimeter 223, the velocities are the same bullets. Out of all that are all within a hundred feet per second of a six millimeter arc. The you, only God advantage sake. six millimeter arc has over six millimeter two twenty three or a two twenty three is if you want to shoot bullets over ninety grains in weight, if that's even an advantage in the real world. <laughs> you, you really had it going there. And you like you dropped out for a minute. No, no, he stumbled around with his oh, words. So I was oh. trying. It says, uh, you really, the velocities with the same bullets out of that are all within. Okay. It was just like, you, a, it was a run on sentence. You really had me going there. Like <laughs> you typed this up, didn't you? Like, I know no, Mike seen this XI four ZT uh, the, for starters, Mike calmed the fuck down. You know what? I'm just, I'm commenting <laughs> for him to tune into the new podcast. <laughs> oh my gosh. We've already, there's so much to unpack there. Uh, you know what? Uh, okay, Boomer. How about that? Is that, is that <laughs> exactly. I just like obviously Wildcats inspire uh, other cartridge literally manufacturers. Everything because literally everything's been made and everything's been Wildcat. You know what? This actually brings up something I wanted to talk about randomly. <sighs> so Jesus I was Christ. watching this thing the, on the internet the other night, and apparently some guy at some point they had some algorithm on a computer, and so what they did was they had the computer like create an infinite amount, like every melody you possibly could come up with. So it'd be like, you know, like, you know, these notes and then it would like these notes one kind of how they do like brute forcing a computer hat. And so effectively they made every melody that was humanly possible to make. And then they copyrighted all of them. And then they put that in the public domain. So anybody could use them. And since they did that, that's what people are using in their court cases. Whenever they get like these weird, lawsuits for copyright infringement when it comes to music and they just use that as a defense and it's all kosher i was like this guy's a fucking asshole right up to the point he said and then we put it in the public domain i was like oh okay he's cool <laughs> interesting you know what what's this guy's name mike 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 calm down okay calm down it's gonna be okay and uh we like johnny reloading bench i, I love johnny's reloading bench uh, again He's a, he's obviously been reloading for years, and you can definitely learn stuff from him and everything else. I think I said something that was like I probably wouldn't always do as he does. Like, but Johnny's reloading bench. He hit a certain niche where he's a great storyteller. Like his, his voice is very soothing to listen to, and it's like ASMR. Is that that's great for ASMR? Yeah. Uh, for me, I just go watch him shoot the groups. <laughs> I just watch the groups because, like, I enjoy listening to him, but I, I don't want to watch someone like because he's never in frame unless he's changed. I haven't watched his videos in a minute, but I don't want to watch the bench top stuff. I'll watch the very beginning of the bench top stuff because he explains, like, what we're doing today. Yeah. And then I just skip directly to the range portion because I want to, like, again, I'm not using any load that he's using. I, do, I don't do a lot of stuff the way most people do. Like, I think it's all retarded and wastes a lot of time, but with the points, whatever grain and all that bullshit. But I enjoy watching the groups he shoots because it's like, oh, is this going to work? <laughs> when I think of some of those people, I always think of that scene from Goodfellas where they're like chopping the garlic with a razor blade with like with their grains. About <laughs> Yeah, uh, whatever. If you do that, then do you, boo-boo. Now, does he do actually, when we say real world, does he like, you know, I've, I think you sent me some of his stuff or I've clicked on some of it, but does he hunt? Like, does he show that? I don't know if he's ever showed any. Cause I I've watched all of his videos. Uh, I don't know if he's, he hunts. Yeah, okay. a lot of stuff he does. It's again, he's a great storyteller. Uh, that's the best way I'd explain it. Like he's a great storyteller. Like he's often will have some sort of like uh, story to be told in the beginning about how he messed something up. <laughs> like 
I, I enjoy that. Like, oh, you messed up, uh, just like everybody else will reloading at some point in time. You're going to you're gonna mess shit up. You're going to fumble through things, and especially when it's new cartridges and everything else. Great storyteller. Uh, I don't know if he's ever shown any of his hunts because, like, like I said, I haven't watched his videos in a while because I'm way behind on, like, all my YouTube shit. Uh, but he used to. You would never see him. Yeah. It's always, like, his hands or... I like the way he does his target stuff because you see the rifle. You just see it just enough of him that knowing that he's running the rifle. You see the he prints the velocity and like he has like a target cam system to where you see oh, what yeah. groups are shooting in real time. Like data wise, if you were like, I still wouldn't follow other people's load data, but data wise, if you're like really trying to learn about cartridges, it is a good channel to watch if you're kind of very new to reloading or. Or if you have something you can't figure out, like if he's done it about it, he usually deep dives powders and bullet combos and everything else. Like it, it's a good place to learn stuff. Like I said, uh, cause he, uh, there've been a lot of times he messed shit up. You know, it's a good place to go in there and learn stuff like that. But he's got a, he's got a great voice for radio. Well, I just want, I want to point out this <laughs> comment suffers from the same thing that a lot of the people who comment this similar stuff is, is when we talk about cartridges, it's, uh, it reminds me a lot of like custom PC guys. Like they built one custom PC and suddenly it's like, you know, you buy like a Mac or something and they're like, you could have built this custom PC for this price. And it's like you have, honestly, if you're reloading, you can do a lot more crazy shit. Yeah. If you're reloading and having custom chambers cut and not like you go down that rabbit hole, that's a whole different world that opens up to you. Mm -hmm. But there is so, there is such a thing such as commercial viability. And if you disagree with me, just look at the 224 Valkyrie versus the six arc. Mm -hmm. And this guy seems to be like, oh, it's, they just copied it. But yeah, no, they turned it into a product to not only sell to the U.S. military, but to sell to uh, everybody else. And look how much it's working because look how our, our, our most popular video is six arc. Uh, this guy is just like the other boomers. And you know what? I don't care what your age is. You're, you're, you're throwing off very boomer vibes. You don't like new shit. You don't like it when someone's successful launching something to market. Like, if you don't see the the benefits of a six millimeter arc over a, did you say two twenty three? Yeah, I'm making sure I'm saying like heard that properly, and you know because I was busy laughing. Your rendition of that was amazing. Uh, if you don't see the benefits over it, then you don't even understand it. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna waste my time going back over the benefits. If you don't see the benefits, then but we're, we're wasting our breath here. Future's now, old man. And then we're going to move on to the next question. Maybe stop being pissed about new things and just, you know, look into it more. Yeah. Uh, enjoy it. It's just, I mean, Buy six, one. 6.5 six, Creedmoor yeah. is just a 250 Savage. It's wave. just a newfangled cartridge. It's a fad. It'll it'll run out eventually. <laughs> uh, you know what? Be open to new things. It's like, fuck your 250 Savage. Did I say what I said? <laughs> <laughs> a, no stop it like i don't care we can trace origins of any cartridges back to literally anywhere like again it's just like that's not real hunting argument like where do we stop with this yeah where do we stop with this uh and just spare me the bullshit i don't care where it came from i don't care like it's just like you said like is the fucking 250 savage even relevant anymore no is whatever the shit he said relevant to this conversation? No. Yeah. Get over it. Again. <laughs> you don't have what's to What's the buy? reality of the current market that most people are going to be entering this at anyway? And then past that, it's like we always say, what is your what is your application for what you're using? This no. no. No, it's basically just a, the same until you get 80 it's, grains or heavier. It's basically the same until you get to a projectile that, um, you know, you can't even find 223 in unless you custom handload it. Yeah. It's basically the same. Basically the same. Copper bullets. Meh. Just get, get the fuck out of here with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to read just because I, I, I enjoy this one. It says, uh, this is a foo vet. It says, yeah, at 30 guns, my wife was like, I don't care. Buy what you want. <laughs> at 60, she was like, I'm being supportive and I don't mind it. At 100, she was like, how are you ever going to shoot all of those? At 140, she was like, are you going to open a shop? 180, she finally realized it was a huge part of my life. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I, I often worry about that. I mean, I know you don't because it's, like, no. non-negotiable. But, nope. you know, I'm like, what if I were, like, my life circumstances changed and I'm like, I have all these guns. And it's like, we're going to have to find a place to put these. Buy a bigger vault. 
Buy a bigger safe. No, I'm just saying. Buy like, multiple safes. I'm, I'm just picturing like all these rifles, and it's like, oh, no, we need to buy this other thing. And it's like, oh, there's, I'm not selling any of these, so good luck. <laughs> good luck to you. I guess we can sell a limb on the <laughs> yeah, you, you got two kidneys. <laughs> um, oh, man. Crypto Hammer 2400. Oh, I hope you made a bunch of money in the crypto market. Crypto oh. Hammer. Although I guess not because he's asking about cost here. Who would you recommend? Yeah, I got I got fucked on Dogecoin too, my dude. Who would you recommend makes the best overall six arc AR cost reliability accuracy? Have you have you put any money around to the volunteer yet? Yes, I'm at like three four hundred. Gotta say, if you'll uh, grab that bad boy up, ditch the factory trigger, which I'm I'm basing this off of one so far. Uh, ditch the factory trigger through the new primary. I think it's called primary from uh, Trigger Tech in it. Uh, I think shoots really good. Yeah, how, uh, they're they're pretty cheap. That's the cheapest one I can think of off the top. Eleven hundred dollars. Yeah, thousand dollars somewhere. Around. It's basically right around the same price as the CMMG. And <clears throat> sorry, folks, I still haven't bought one of the CMMGs to test it. Uh, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> just hadn't gotten around to it. Like I need to because I need another. There's enough people that run, are running the 16 inch CMMGs uh, that I really need to add one to our lineup. I just hadn't got around to it yet. Yeah. Uh, but the the I, I changed out the butt stock and had a, it, there's nothing wrong with what it had. It's B5. It came with B5 Sop Mod. Is what that's called? Uh, the factory yeah. furniture. I changed it to one of the mag pulls. I was really glad I did that. Uh, Shoots really good. Uh, all of our varmint offerings that I've been working on testing shoot really fantastic out of it. Uh, all the way up to factory 105s and 108s shoot uh, sub M08. So, I know this is going to be controversial and all. Liar. <laughs> Liar. Prove it, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to get into that because it's like. <laughs> You're built on a throne of lies. <laughs> Who are you? Prove it. But anyways, it's just one rifle. I don't have ten of them. Like I didn't shoot five million round well, the, groups. Even, even the other Smith and Wessons, though, they're like they put out pretty consistent product. Uh, again, first thing I did was drop their trigger. Now it, they call it it's like some kind of upgraded trigger. It's a flat shoot, I think, from the factory, but it just wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. So I put in. And I was also wanting a reason to test out the new Trigger Tech uh, low cost AR trigger, which is fantastic, by the way. Uh, it shoots really nice. Now, that one, I do have, I think it's the, that one CGS, I don't remember which one, the, the, the shorty one I have. The, uh, uh, is it, it's either the Hyperion K or the five, no, no, the 556? Five, might be the 556. Five, the DT, the direct thread? Well, they're both. Shit, I don't remember now. So that's the shorty, shorty. Yes. Uh, with that combo, it's a very good shooting rifle. Uh, I don't even remember what gas system it has. I'm assuming it probably just has like uh, H2 on a carbon length buffer. I'm, I imagine I yeah. haven't um, haven't done nothing else to it other than like the, the trigger had to go. Like it was it was probably like a six pound trigger factory. But I'm uh, sure it's just mil spec standard trigger. Well, I, th- I want to say it was some sort of flat shoe, and they called it like whatever. Like yeah, the the part that sticks out of the gun was machine nice, but everything above that was yes, probably just uh, bullshit. I was I was not impressed with it whatsoever. No, it's nothing like like some of the new Sig stuff has really well the good factory triggers. A lot of the Sig stuff is actually uh, OEM'd by Geisley on the Where, on the MCXs and stuff. But other than that, like I don't know. I think I seen some. I can't remember the name of the company the other day. Someone else is came out with one, but it's like fourteen hundred. I think like your lowest cost that I'm aware of right now uh, is that's Smith and Wesson. I think the volunteer, but there's the volunteer in the CMMG. I think they're right there in the kind of same price bracket. You know, and it's kind of somebody else made a comment is that there was tons of ammo available in Alabama, but no guns. Really, I think the next few months you're about to see a bunch of guns hit like flood the market. Seems like there's more. Like, again, I seen another person, another company the other day. Uh, I'm really excited. I'm just gonna go ahead and interrupt this broadcast to tell you this: how excited I am about a particular rifle company coming out of the Six Arc very soon. Blackout Defense. <laughs> they posted the picture of theirs the other day, and I'm just like, "Ready yet?" Question mark. <laughs> Are you ready, kids? Hey, not that I need another carbon fiber barrel to Six Arc, or I need another semi-auto Six Arc, but I just. 
And you went to, to the hater on that video, uh, piss off. That's a really nice AR. <laughs> So uh, Kevin T.W. This isn't a question, but he pointed out, because we talked about the contract got in that video, that the uh, Barrett Rex 7 won, but they put a proof barrel on it. Uh, he says he's not sure like other parts like an Isley trigger, but that he has a power point on his phone that has the contract. So, yeah, I guess Barrett Rex 7 on the proof. Um, next question is, have you guys looked at the Unitop Precision Bolt Gun Upper for an AR lower? I know we've talked about this on various podcasts. Uh, still, I guess the answer would be a no on no. that. <laughs> I, I can, I can't even make myself stick to a plan of having multiple uppers for lower. I can't even stick to myself to having a plan <laughs> of getting up at a normal time or going to bed. No, I, I say this all the time. Like I'm gonna build, especially with you know six arc being a thing. I'm gonna build multiple uppers and one lower to take on these hunting trips, so I can cut down on how many guns I take because I'm I'm a bit of a you know, over prepper at times. Yeah. I can't even, like, as soon as I put together an upper, I build a whole new rifle. <laughs> I, I can never do that. Cause it's like, Cause like, you know, so much of the money's on the top part, not the bottom part. Yeah. It's and it, like, as far as like the Uinta, like I, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uinta. Uinta. Uh, uh, interesting concept. Uh, and I, I hear good things about accuracy. Everything I've read has been, been good. Uh, but as it pertains to like, I, I should probably just get one to get one, just to have one because it'd be cool. Because like they they've made their place in the the world. I, it's you know it's like uh, y'all when I, I remember telling y'all perhaps telling y'all about this when y'all first heard about it, and I think your response was, "I don't want all the bad things about an AR-15 on my bow gun." I think it's yeah, yeah. some version. That of sounds that. like something I would say. There is you know. Uh, validness to that point like it's like when i get into a bolt gun it's different realm essentially like i, I like my ARs to shoot really well and nowadays they're capable of shooting really well with how great machining's gotten but i just you know i could see i could see both sides of the coin i suppose like i could see how handy it'd be uh in like an ar-15 platform if you had like a longer barreled six arc like a 24 inch six arc on a uinta uinta i think it's eight cent upper and then you had like a 16 inch with a lpvo for like daytime cow hunting and then you had like a you know whatever for thermal and stuff like that like a very multi-purpose situation but at the end of the day here's what stops me with that with that multi-purpose lower is i like different stocks for different situations like this this stock is a the moe it's okay i think is what this one is yes I think so. It's kind of a good do it all stock, but is it perfect for the laying down prone and shooting long range off a bag all the time? No, it's much better suited for like a, a hunting where you might shoot off a bag every once in a while. Then that puts me in a different realm. Like if I'm going to have, again, just an upper, because that, that was kind of, it used to be like their big selling point is like take your lower and have a bolt action upper, yeah. which I don't know. They may be into like full builds nowadays. I, again, I don't, keep up with them that that well uh and i keep up with enough know like a lot of people say their stuff is really accurate and blah blah, blah. uh cool concept you know but am i gonna carry around a different butt stock for like as again i just i don't get into that we should probably buy one you know i'm just gonna leave it at that <laughs> marketing budget yeah <laughs> Oh, uh, the next one is so this is from uh Dandre McNeil, um, have you seen any noticeable difference between a 22 and a 20 inch six arc with about the 105 to 112 grain range, all thing else being equal? Meaning, like, like in velocity? I mean, I'm guessing, like, is it like enough of to justify the extra two inches? Because you said we will cover that in a later podcast. Uh, we'll probably cover that in a later podcast. Uh, me, no, uh, I would go either whatever, whatever your heart's desire. Uh, obviously the longer the barrel, typically speaking, I mean, you do get a, to a point of diminishing returns. Typically speaking, the longer the barrel, the more velocity, like you're probably going to get from when you say 20 to 22, it's probably going to be like, you, know, you could probably be up there close to 50 feet per second. And if you think that's going to like make or break the situation, then go for the longer one. Now to me, where the real significant changes are like 16 to 20, 
you know, 20 to 24. Uh, I probably wouldn't go anything longer than 24, although there are some guys running a little bit longer ones. But uh, I just, I, me personally, because I run Suppress, uh, I'd go with the 20 over the 22. Unless where I would put any significant difference on it is like 20 to 24. Because 24 might get you another 100. Yeah. 150, 250 per second. It just depends on the powder and everything else. You know what? I want to decide for you. 20 inch. Yeah. And by espresser. Yeah. 20 inch is like, it's slightly longer than an 18. About that. <laughs> I mean, 18 inch, even with factory ammo, performs <clears throat> great uh, majority of the time. Um, it's kind of, it was developed around the 18 inch barrel platform. Uh, for that, for a certain reason, like it gives you a certain velocity threshold and everything else. You know, I've now skipped over to our, uh, you know, six arc video, the other one we posted, which is heck, why you need a six arc. It was a 12 minute talk. <coughs> um, the one reason why not arc weird bolt face, and it is not better than a Dasher GT CMBR. And you do not need a special mag that doesn't have feed issues. Well, there's, there's a big difference between the six arc and those. And I'm going to leave that up to you to decide what that is. Um, everything. Yeah, well, yeah. I wonder, All yeah. the things. I think you're missing the point, bub. Yeah. <laughs> uh, KVOB45, genuinely confused with the disdain for 308. I'm pretty certain it'll shoot, in, it'll shoot inside this cartridge with more energy, just a bigger platform. Well, the bigger, it's like saying, like, I don't see why all the hate for the big block. It'll do everything your sick, your small block will do. You know, it's, it's just, we're not even going to talk about that. Um,. I just want to start bashing on 308 now. <laughs> I think the problem is, uh, much like the bullet itself, the the people who shoot 308 are slow to understand the joke. And Whoa! So I think that's what you should run into. Here. Whoa! Nismo Racer, sick name, 15. Uh, do you guys own a munitions company? If so, name. Allyammunitions.com. So I know we're not as clear about that as we probably should be, but it's also <laughs> like we have no idea... That are we not getting zucked? Well, I guess I don't even know who the current CEO is anymore of YouTube, but like, yeah, we try to leave it like where you have just much, enough information to find it, but not like right. where we're constantly shilling it so we get yeah. everything banned. Yeah. Um, because they don't really like selling ammo online or guns online or no. any of that stuff. No, but we do have six arc in stock. Um, so I need to respond to factory this. ammo currently. Uh, I think I tried to respond to that originally, and it wouldn't let. Well, me. if you you can't post links, if you try to post a link, okay. would... um, you know, depth charge asks, uh, what barrels is everyone seeing the best performance with? He's planning a six arc build. Already has the arrow receiver, but no bolt carrier group. I mean, probably proof. I would guess. Did you say barrel length or barrel manufacturer? Best performance. Uh, like what? Yeah, what barrel? Like which barrel company? Manufacturer. Yeah. I would recommend you get on the six millimeter arc page and run a little poll. I know a lot of people love T box barrels, uh, which is what I believe what primarily what Sergeant Arms uses. Uh, I've seen a lot of people praise T box all in word. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I've seen a lot of people praise proof. Uh, I myself have been more than happy with all my proof barrels. Uh, that's I don't have any. I don't. Even, I'm sure they make like standard stainless barrels, but yeah. all my proofs are carbon fiber wrapped, uh, different profiles. Been pleasantly surprised with all of them. Like I've been more than happy with them. Uh, and this is this this barrel is a high enough round count barrel life to justify getting a carbon fiber for me because like my primary thing is going to be hunting. Like above all, uh, yes, I'll lay down long range plank with all these platforms, but primarily i'm always hunting so i'm, I'm looking to trim that pound like I, that's i want that weight savings so yeah. i'll pay a little bit for it you know it's good barrel uh man there's one other i i see a lot of people shit i can't there was a one other manufacturer and i can't remember who it was that a lot of people sing their praise but there's several bear manufacturers uh uh, ballistic advantage. I've only tested the one. It's a 16 inch so far. And it shoots fantastic. Uh, and I'll probably, I'll probably get all the different links they have very soon. And so I can do like a comprehensive study on that in particular, because 
here's the deal. Here's, here's what I don't understand. I'm going right here. <laughs> I seen uh golly, I don't remember what group I was in. Maybe an AR-15 group or something. Or maybe it was a comment or videos. I don't remember. People like bashing this shit out of blessing advantage. There thing? was a there was a gunsmith who posted a video. I don't even remember the name of the channel. They got set a barrel that like I think it had no rifling or something. You know, obviously. Oh, that's right. I guess now it's the hip thing, the bash ballistic manage. Uh, look at your barrel before you install it. And there you go. Uh, most barrel. Oh, here's the deal. When you're, you know, <laughs> superior designed cartridge, you know, most barrels are going to work pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. I was going to go ahead and say I have like a ballistic advantage loan. I have, uh, I think, 10 or 15 different rifles with ballistic advantage barrels. They all shoot fantastic. Well, generally speaking, what you're really getting out of barrels is typically <clears throat> on the spendier side is the uh, the the materials, which typically yeah. is more about hard use than necessarily yeah. accuracy. Yeah, I, I uh, all I will say this: all of mine are their. Uh, I can't remember all the names of their series. Like their most expensive ones, uh, whatever premium premier or something. I don't remember. Uh, I, mean, I, I try to, I, again, I'm not magged up in barms. I try to only get stainless barrels. And I don't remember all the little prints of bullshit. But like most of them are going to be a stainless barrel. Because yeah. uh, throughout the years, I have noticed myself that, you know, any stainless style barrel uh, tends to be easier to clean. And that's just been my experience. I can go into that another day, I suppose. You know, uh, I've seen cheap, shitty barrels shoot really good. And while we're we're addressing things, even pencil barrels, I've seen them shoot good. But you can't. We need to we need to specify, I suppose, for the people out there that don't understand these things. Like I'm not talking about high strings of fire. Anything. Wait, you don't you don't go out to the range with your your kit on <laughs> my my and- hunter. And, you know, blast at some paper targets 30 yards. I'm talking strictly accuracy testing. Accuracy and precision, I suppose. Whatever. And uh, pencil barrels all the way up to heavy barrels, all, depending on the caliber, because you, you can't take a 28 nozzler that takes almost 100 grains of powder and put it in like a thin profile hunt barrel and expect it to hold a good group through five shots, because that bitch is smoldering hot after five shots. Uh, can you pause this for a second? A few moments later. There are so many channels out there where, or like Grantham was saying, like they, like he doesn't know if they can make it today because like back then, like just talking on a black background, showing people how like a chest rig work was enough. Yeah. And then, you know, we were looking through and we found this one channel that's like, their production value is insane. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, in terms of, like they obviously had like a multi-person team filming these things out on locations and, um, uh, like I never heard of them before, and then it turns out, it seems like they're local to us, like more Lubbock area. And uh, you're just like, there's and they they have a pretty decent following, or they're gaining a pretty good following. But it's like, it's so interesting that like it's not even in your fucking radar anymore because yeah. the way social media is with yeah. gun stuff. Yeah, um, it's sad because there's a lot of people that put a lot of effort into it, and uh, because of like the algorithms and all that shit, like you just. Don't find them, which I act. I try to actively seek out new channels, new information, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's gotten so bad nowadays. Like, I cannot keep up with because every, everybody knows the deal nowadays. Is like you have to put out the content uh, and high quality content and constantly putting yeah. out content. Uh, you know, some of them I don't watch because they're garbage. Uh, they turn into garbage or whatever the case may be. But there's this, there's still a lot of good stuff out there. It's just you can't keep up with all of it. Yeah, I think I think what you have to do is avoid the Me Too content. Like, like we're you know, again, not calling out anybody in particular, but it looked like a lot of their videos. It's like there's no reason I would click on that unless I happen to be a member and I cared about that specific thing or whatever. Right. But it's like. I'm not going to get anything from this video that I couldn't get from a more in-depth, you know, like sitting down and watching somebody. Cause it's like, if I'm shopping at your store, just because I'm shopping at your store doesn't mean I'm like localized to that information. Mm-hmm. So you have to almost like aim the content a different way where it's not, spe- you know, anything like we, you know, 
we have obviously seen success talking about the store and stuff on just on here. Yes. And like you have to like you have to almost like do it a different way, I think, and like make yourself stand out. That's that's the hardest part. Yeah, because uh, well, well, I see it on the the, the camera side, like the, the channels that I actually watch and like like don't look away from, don't get distracted, like. They are so next level. It's, it's like, you're like, how is this guy doing this? It's like, right. it like blows your fucking mind. Right. Um, and so, yeah. Anyway, and it's a little side tangent. <laughs> while you, were, you, had to, you had to run off and handle something. Handle business. Yeah. Dress, trespasser. <laughs> had to go away with 308 at him. That being said, I mean, we've answered most of these questions. I, that I've, I was going through trying to find more. Um, most of them are like the same question, but just phrased right. differently. And we're, I mean, we've done, we've recorded for three hours. I don't know when we started this video. <laughs> um, <laughs> is there, like, I, you know, I think wrapping up, I mean, obviously the, the, the first video we put out was almost, we're getting damn near close to a year. It was like seven, eight months ago, I think. I don't know. We've done quite a few, but like the big one. Yeah. I think it is close to a year ago. So, I mean, I, you know, for the people who are just now watching this and maybe haven't watched the other ones, obviously go back and watch those if you want more information, but like. You know, end of, you know, or August going into hunting season 2023. What's your pitch for the six arc? Obviously, you have one laid out in front of you. What's my pitch? It's still the same for that do it all platform. It is the, I don't give a shit about your whatever. Well, actually, sir, in 2008, Richard uh, Bernstein uh, released this wild (laughs) cartridge. And it, uh, I don't care about any of that. Ammo is. Uh, we have the factory 105s and 108s available on the website. Uh, we Everybody got, should have the ammo at this yes, point uh, in terms of your stores. I know a lot of people got the 105s. Uh, we bought a ton of it. Um, pa- pallets. Yes. Pallets. Uh, we are officially, you know, about to be. <sighs> now, I, I say this. <laughs> But, but the reality of the situation is like you better be fast on the trigger when it comes up on the website. I'm not putting it up yet in case something were to happen. Like if I find a flaw with you know further down into the brass, whatever the case may be, which I don't think I will. Uh, our varmint ammo stuff is very close to coming back, and we're not going to run out for a while. But you're going to be fast because like, the same thing. I'm going through the 22 degree right now. As soon as I get, because like also I'm trying to juggle all these things, but yeah. As soon as I get some load up, it's gone. It's gone within minutes, and that's what it's going to be like on the six arc. So I and you're not even announcing it, are you? Not really. Yeah. <laughs> just, at this point, no. Uh, I might throw out a story because there's so many people sign up for email alerts on Twenty Two Green. Okay, and that's been and, working good. Huh? That's been working good. The email I alert. haven't had any complaints. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping. Uh, it is as far as a AR-15 platform, and, and the reason why and we've covered this a million grillion times, as far as a youth capable rifle, uh, in in the bullet, the projectile availability out there, and it's what it's capable of taking game size and everything, like white tail and down easily. It is the 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 latest and greatest hunting cartridge as far as keeping the recoil low as shit. Uh, the velocities it's able to achieve makes it a perfect like again i'm not going to get into like effective range because people get upset when i talk about that let's just say typical deer hunting ranges which is i'm throwing out 225 yards yards? oh sorry so i'm I'm gonna throw out 200 yards in the end it's perfect for that it's perfect for predator hunting yes i know you can do it with 223 i've seen me do it too but is it the best no uh Yes, you can get a big loud and boomer cartridge like a three oh eight or thirty out six and give it to your son and it's like a sub six pound rifle. It's gonna beat the shit out of it. It's gonna be an awful experience. Why? Why do that? What with its intended use, its intended platform length and everything else, and the the capability of it in a shorter platform, it's perfect for young kids or light people recoil sensitive, such as myself. <laughs> it just it's the performance there it's a great do-it-all cartridge for anything especially in texas i mean what was the animal the, was the neil guys neil guy uh we had some buddies take some neil guy with them 18 it were their 18s yes they're 18s 18 and 16. they were 18 18 inch six 
six arcs run the factory 108s. Yeah, it would have been the 10, yeah, white box. Yeah. Yeah, because that's all we had at the time. Uh, took Neil Guy, Neil Guy, folks. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, you're not yeah. doing that with your goddamn copper bullet 223. I mean, if shot places is correct, you can do anything with anything. Like, I, I'm not going to hear to debate that, but like, if we're being realistic about the situation for a Texas rifle, Shorter platforms, again, 18 inches and down. I mean, you can obviously build longer ones if you want. It's just enough to get everything done. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, ballistically speaking, it performs very well. And I don't give a shit about your 80 grain bullshit. I don't care. Uh, per everything that's factory available, we can wildcat all the live long day and do all kinds of crazy shit. Yes, I'm aware of that. I do some of the things myself. Majority of people aren't wildcatting. They aren't hand loading. Majority of people are buying factory ammo. So you have to think about these things from that perspective. Like, how can I get the best performance with the lowest amount of recoil out of any, especially an AR 15 platform? Six arc is fantastic. And mind you, we also would never tell people, well, you have to get rid of your old gun and get a new one. Typically, nope. the people seeking out this information are people who want to buy a new gun. And we encourage you to buy new guns. Yeah. I mean, that's what, again, I'm not encouraging you to, like, throw away whatever you're using. The, the, yeah. Obviously, the typically speaking, as it pertains to, like, choosing new calibers and everything else, the thing that you already have, if you actually practice with it, that's the thing you should hunt with. But if you're like, I want a new gun, I encourage that. I encourage you to buy firearms because that's what, that's what drives these new things. Yeah. The more shit that you buy, the more money they have, the more leftover money they have to develop new things. What are you going to spend it on anyway? <laughs> Stop wasting on boost. Yeah. That's mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can get to work fine with an old carbureted car, but electronic fuel injection is pretty fucking nice. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter if it's not for you. It doesn't matter if it is for me. Like, can we just agree to that? Like, it, No, we can't. Uh, we're right. You're wrong. <laughs> deal with it. Um, now, before you get into, like, the close out, you know, shop alley munitions, all that, all that shit. I just want to point out, you know, you guys may not have appreciated my images of Taylor Swift, <laughs> but just one of them has on uh, over 50,000 likes, just one picture on Instagram. So, uh, fuck you guys. How about that? That's rude. No, I'm talking to the, the haters. Because <laughs> as, uh, as one, uh, Taylor Allison Swift said, and the hater is going to hate, 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 hate. The faker is going to fake, 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 fake. Make, the shaker's just going to shake, 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 shake it off, shake it off. You lost me. I was, I'm not on your side anymore. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. A lot of other people appreciated it, so I got my... Probably Taylor Swift fans. I would assume so, <laughs> which is like everybody else but your community, apparently. Again, when Sensible people. I mean, 50,000 likes on Instagram. I think that's pretty cool. Ooh. Yeah. Dude, they're everywhere. They're freaking everywhere. All the all my pictures are everywhere. It's insane. Congrats. Oh. It's really reaffirming as a you know creator to have your shit be shared and you, enjoyed by people. Why don't you put that effort into other things and try to match it? Uh, because I could never capture anything as great as uh, Taylor Allison uh, Smith. Uh, uh, uh. Anyways. <laughs> be sure and go check <laughs> Be sure and go check out AllieMunitions.com. We have lots of factory ammo. We have custom hand-loaded ammo. We have e-calls. We have tons of new stuff. Go check it out. Hunt season's here. Or if you're in Midland, Texas, come by Al Outdoors. Or if you want to take a little day trip, uh, come on out. Uh, Al Outdoors, open six days a week. Indoor gun range, all that jazz. Like come side in your rifle cool in a yeah. nice, uh, nice environment, 100-yard range. Yeah, indoor. it's air-conditioned. It's crazy. It doesn't have to be out in sw sweltering heat. I mean, I don't mind it, but whatever. But anyways, we appreciate y'all watching. Let us know in the comments down below uh, what you think about Taylor Swift. <laughs> Are you going to be getting a pumpkin spice latte now that the season's here? Let us know down below. You must really like people disliking. <laughs> Man, I'm just, I'm, um, yeah. Well, you know what, guys, just take it easy on him. He's special. Yeah. You guys, are, you guys are bullying somebody on the spectrum, so keep that in mind. Anyways, we'll see you guys next time.